This video was made possible by Skillshare. Start learning new skills and exploring your curiosity for free today by being one of the first 1,000 to click the link in the description. Ah, uh, the Roosevelts. They're like a smaller, worse looking, less murdered Kennedy family. America loves its Roosevelts almost as much as the Roosevelts loved, well, the Roosevelts. Maybe it's the pragmatism, maybe it's the big mustaches, or maybe it's the uh, incest, but in any case, we just can't stop naming things after them. Roosevelt, Georgia, Roosevelt Island, the Roosevelt Memorial, the USS Roosevelt, the other USS Roosevelt, the other other USS Roosevelt, the other 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 USS Roosevelt, the fifth USS Roosevelt, and of course, Rose E. Felt, my failed line a president-themed fabric. In fact, America's Roosevelt reverence has gone so far that we made a Roosevelt National Park that's not even in the United States. This may come as a shock to some of our American viewers, but it turns out that scientists believe there are other countries beside the United States. How many? There's no way to know for sure, but we have strong evidence that suggests that just north of America is a strange land called Canada, filled mostly with syrup and ruled by a beautiful mannequin brought to life by a moose wizard. Anyways, it turns out in this mythical winter wonderland of Canada, am I saying that right? Canada? Just past its border with the state of Maine is where we find Roosevelt Campobello International Park. Now, if International Park sounds like a strange title to you, that's because it is. In fact, Campobello is the US's only international park, but it still functions much like the 63 strictly star-spangled national parks. It's considered a quote, unit of the National Park Service, it's listed on the NPS website, it celebrates a US figure, it pulls funding from the Department of the Interior, and parents drag their snot-nosed children there to try to teach them some vague lesson about history or nature or something. However, it does have some international flair. Different silly hats, scary socialist leanings like fee-free entry, and collaborative funding and stewardship split between Real America and Maple America. To understand why American dollars and American people are preserving a place in not America, we first need to consider why this chunk of Canada matters to the greatest country in the world as determined by the number of annual deaths by lawnmower. Turns out, the mission of the National Park Service goes beyond protecting America's biggest, dankest rocks, waterfalls, and upside-down waterfalls, and extends to protecting U.S. heritage broadly, which includes old buildings and cultural sites, which is all to say that Wall Campobello does have some decently large and dank rocks, and occasionally beautiful snowfall, it matters to Americans not because of its snow that melts, and more its rows of velts. You see, when a young Franklin Delano Roosevelt was cutting his teeth on the mean streets of Hyde Park, New York, engaging in dangerous rough-and-tumble pastimes like golf and polo, Mama and Papa Roosevelt did what average Americans do and got themselves a humble 34-room cottage on Campobello Island, a popular vacation spot for Americans, where they spent their summers sailing, lounging, and getting polio. After a few decades at Campobello, experiencing the godlike high of using summer as a verb, the family moved out in 1952, and because of Americans' totally not destructive obsession with rich, powerful people, we decided to turn the old summer home neighborhood into a place of pilgrimage for celebrity worshippers and New Deal groupies. The only obstacle was that this particular piece of American history wasn't in America. Now, normally when you're making a national park, the hardest part is actually convincing the people living there that their land ought to belong to the government instead of to them. In this case, though, that problem was solved by the fact that by the 1950s, an American oil tycoon had become owner of Campobello and was already looking to enshrine it as a historical site. Instead, what made this national park making experience difficult was the fact that Canada wasn't, and here's the really interesting bit, still isn't the United States. But nonetheless, Americans pulled themselves up by their bootstraps, girded themselves in virtue, and convinced the Canadians to do it for the PR. While you might think that FDR's vacation home is hollowed ground that transcends politics, it turns out its tale as a national park has less to do with reverence for where our former president learned to wear sweater vests, and more to do with getting a damn thing done. You see, conveniently, at the same time that oil tycoon began pushing for an American park in Canada, the Cold War was heating up, and the US and Canada were trying to smooth out a deal about a dam on the transboundary rivers along the country's shared border. With tension and distrust in the air, and the shared need to get a big damn deal done, no politician could have picked a better time to collaborate on a relatively cheap project that displayed that Canada and the US got along just fine and were maybe even friends, if you're into labels. 
So, with virtue signaling on their minds, some politicians overworked interns drew up a treaty that outlined a new park that the US and Canada were to share the costs of purchasing and preserving, and on January 22, 1964, President Lyndon B. for Bad Boy Johnson and Prime Minister Lester B. for Big Dog Pearson signed on the dotted line, creating the Roosevelt Campobello International Park. Now, there's only one Roosevelt Campobello International Park where representation and duties are split squarely between two countries, but I have good news. This isn't the only place where you can get in touch with your proud red, white, and blue roots while outside the 50 states. The NPS also looks after parks and monuments in American territories from Puerto Rico to Guam, while the American Battle Monuments Commission manages 23 American monuments and cemeteries in foreign countries. So, whether you're traveling in Maple America, Guava America, or even Big Weird Scaffolding America, you'll always have a park or monument of some sort where you can soak in the rich, effervescent, deeply inspiring, never bad or embarrassing or violent history of America abroad. When you go to these places, you're probably going to want to take some photos to show off your sparkling culture to the historyless heathens you're traveling with. To ensure the highest quality of braggadocious photos, I suggest taking Dale McManus's iPhone photography class on Skillshare. In just 19 quick, digestible lessons, McManus can help unlock your creative abilities with just the camera on your phone. No fancy apps, expensive lenses, or cameras the size of your head and the cost of your car. Or, if you already have a grasp of iPhone photography or purchased a camera with your car allowance, Skillshare offers thousands of ad-free courses that will expand your skill set and creative horizons. If you're like me and love to learn new things to better yourself at work or at home, Skillshare is perfect for you, so join today for free if you are one of the first 1,000 to click the link in the description below.